What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given and today we're gonna be going deep on Zippy the Zombie, taking a look at some really spicy plays, and that one that you can see in the thumbnail, I'll put it up on the screen here for a second too. That's not even the sweetest one that we are gonna be looking at today. So this is definitely a fun one. Make sure to watch it to the end because we've got some fun stuff in store. And the game starts off pretty strong, getting to pick up two characters on turn two with a Forbidden Fruit and a Cinderella, as well as a pair of baby dragons. We've got some dragons going on as well. Those are also going to be a little bit of a theme throughout this video, a little bit foreshadowing as to where this one is going. This game was played on the previous patch, however, I promise you, you probably are not going to notice it. There's not going to be a difference between this game and, and some other games. I mean, there will be a little bit of a difference, and we'll talk about that as it comes up. Uh, but it's it's just as relevant, I think, on the current patch, all of this gameplay. And uh, yeah, it's just always nice to start off well with Zippy the Zombie, getting to play five units here on turn three. That way we are getting our kills and we're getting those early evil twins. So that way we can start trying to cook up some spicy brews with all of that. And I guess you already know kind of where this is going if you pay attention to the, the thumbnail and I did flash it up on the screen again. So you'll have a definite idea of where this one is headed. And when I'm playing Zippy the Zombie, there's a few things that I'm generally looking out for from game to game. I feel like a lot of my Zippy the Zombie games revolve around Ogre Princess in one way or another, uh, but this game is definitely going to have a little bit of an Ogre Princess action to it. Uh, partially, I just really like to pick up good tier 3 characters. So that way I can potentially find Crystal Ball, uh, though we'll talk about that a little bit more next week when uh, I examine trying to force Crystal Ball on Zippy a little bit. Uh, that's not going to be the main focus of today's video. We get a free win here up against the Sphinx that I guess is thrown in the towel. A uh, little bit awkward because we didn't get to clear that many of their characters, but hey, a win's a win. I'm then going to pick up the Sleeping Princess and mix a whistle it, with the key idea being that that will tick down Cindy and awaken the princess for next turn, and then I'm just going to activate Cindy right here and right now. That's where we grab Bounty Board, and that is where we decide that we are going to be playing Slay, basically, more or less from this point on I am going to try to make that comp happen uh, I still have crystal ball is an idea in the back of my head but obviously ogre princess can slay as well we're going to be tripling ogre princess next turn either via the evil twin or from the ogre princess in the shop but we'll just take the free one in the shop but if we could find a crystal ball off of this ogre princess triple or a merlin's hat I'll definitely consider those treasures as well, with the idea being that we could then potentially triple this Sleeping Princess as well. We're also going to wind up tripling the Baby Dragon because of the Ogre Princess Slay, and from there I'm just going to take the Fairy Tail, and then I'm going to grab the Ogre Princess Triple, and we're going to see a treasure with the word Slay on it, so that is indeed what I'm going to take. I do think there was an interesting opportunity with that um, uh, tier two treasure selection that we weren't really expecting to make. So I wanna back up and talk about that for a second too, because, well, there's a lot of good tier three treasures regardless, right? That's kind of what I've been talking about the whole point of this video so far. Uh, in addition to uh, Crystal Ball and Merlin's Hat, there's also Treasure Map. And then there's also Ancient Sarcophagus. And then for Slay-related treasures, obviously we grab the Cloak, but there's also Cursed Throne and uh, Blood Moon. Uh, so all of these things are definitely treasures that I want to consider. However, the biggest thing that I wanted to point out is that I don't really love Locked Chest on Zippy the Zombie, because you're going to be able to find so many treasures anyways, that it really isn't worth your time to pick up a treasure that you don't really want to wait around for in the form of the locked chest. So 
not really going to worry about that. I am noticing that these polywoggles are five fives and those are pretty tempting. And then the other thing that I'm noticing is that Questing Princess is a nine three. And I think I kind of got distracted by that, in all honesty. It's a 9-3, but I probably sh still shouldn't be caring about it. And I definitely shouldn't be caring about it enough to evil twin it. But I go for it. That gives us a... Did I, did I say 9-3? I meant 9-7. Uh, and that gives us an additional 8-6 when we evil twin it, because the twin copy does not get the shop bonuses. Awkwardly, neither of these are going to be able to attack. That makes me feel like kind of a big dummy for making that move and wasting my evil twin. We could have made an additional nutcracker here, which you can see from the thumbnail we're going to wind up doing anyways. Um, or we could have made another friendly spirit or heart world elder. There's a bunch of things that we could have done with that. And uh, ultimately, I do think it winds up being a pretty big mistake. Hopefully it's one that doesn't cost us too much. Uh, I wind up rolling a little bit more just to try to pick up on one of the characters that I already have some copies of and then ultimately wind up picking up a Lightning Dragon. And a big reason for that is, of course, the Bounty Board. I definitely want to try to make Lightning Dragon River Wish Mermaid work. That's also part of the reason that I made additional copies of these Brave Princesses. But yeah, like I said, not gonna work out super great. This is a small thing too. I put in the Crafties because uh, Crafties are slightly better than other characters because when Crafties get stolen, then they won't have the same stats when your opponent steals them uh, if they don't have the same amount of treasure. So just a very small, like, technical thing that I try to do there. Awkwardly, now my Ogre Princess isn't going to slay. So I just can't have it all. I'm winning these combats by way too much. Hopefully against Mordred, we can turn that around a little bit, but yeah, this has all been incredibly awkward. I think I could even justify evil twinning the Brave Princess and just grabbing a tier 3 treasure, especially if we were playing on the current patch, because on the current patch, you can triple a Brave Princess, get a treasure from tripling it, and then it will still have its quest, and it will actually have the lowest possible number of any of the characters that have its quest. So that's something cool to look out for in the future. Though, like I said, this game is played on the previous patch. And because this game is played on the previous patch, I mentioned we're going to play some things a little bit differently. Mainly, we have a higher desire to hunt for tier four treasures, namely the Horn of Olympus. That is still a tier four treasure in this video, but you'll see why I'm saying it doesn't matter that much in the end. Uh, Cause uh, well, I don't want to spoil it any more than that, but if you get it, you get it. Uh, we are not going to get a sleigh with Ogre Princess, or we get one sleigh um, and uh, we just don't get the win. That's what I meant. But I guess we got our wish and we got our sleigh with Ogre Princess. So there you go. Not even gonna worry about picking up the crafty and grabbing another tier two treasure. We could grab Hermes boots, now Hermes sandals, though. Otherwise, I'm not really super excited. I really want to spend my time and my gold trying to find River Wish Mermaid while I am still level four. River Wish Mermaid plus Lightning Dragon, that is what we need to be taking advantage of with this bounty board. So I go for a full roll down here, just looking for that uh, River Wish Mermaid. And unfortunately, it is not going to come to fruition. So a little bit awkward. I will grab a Hermes Magic Beans and then we'll move into the combat. I think that we're still pretty strong and we are still growing these Nutcrackers. One other thing is I sell a Crafty in the final second just in case my opponent has any summon characters. I didn't want my hand to be overflown and the evil twin to wind up in the shop. That would have just been really awkward. And we're also grabbing um, a character from the sleigh on Ogre Princess. So it's very, very possible that you wind up getting overflow stuff there. Probably even wanted to sell off multiple things, but 
no matter. Uh, we are going to pick up the triple for Heartwood Elder here, and then I'm going to grab Fool's Gold, and that's going to give me a bunch of gold to try to roll and find these treasures that I'm looking for. I'm also going to do one other thing, and that is cast a Beauty's Influence on the Nutcracker. The main reason for that is I know I'm not going to see any more spells this turn, and making the Nutcracker good means that we can Evil Twin it, uh, giving the Nutcracker a little bit more health also means that we are just more likely to be able to grab a treasure from it. And then again, I could also do something like sell off the Sporko here just to remove some spots in my hand and remove the possibility of those evil twins overflowing into the shop, which again is just a little bit awkward. We are going to wind up getting the slay with Ogre Princess and getting a win, so we're still really strong for as much as we're greeting and as much as we're being silly. We are starting these turns with a bunch of extra gold, just not a bunch, a bunch of extra gold because we haven't found that River Wish Mermaid yet. Uh, but now with Fool's Gold plus a few slays, we're still doing pretty good for ourselves. And then we're going to pick up a Lancelot and a Baba Yaga. And one cool thing that Lancelot can do, or sorry, one cool thing that Baba Yaga can do is activate a Brave Princess in one turn. And that's fun. But I'd also just like to try to get these Lancelots online. So I think I'm going to just ignore this... Uh, brave princess capacity and just go all in on these Lancelots here and I think that's also going to include selling out of brave princess and just playing double Baba Yaga Lance and if these Lances can start slaying then we can grab some tier 5 treasures if these Nutcrackers can hold on then we can grab some tier 4 treasures so we've got a lot of ideas building here we are going to take a little bit of damage on this one because we are greeting out so that'll put us down to 4 and no quests completed. Okay, we're definitely playing this one a little bit greedy, but I think that we can still figure out a way out of this one. It's gonna be close though. It's definitely gonna be close. I got us to the thumbnail. Am I gonna be able to get us farther? I'm not sure. We'll find out right now. I'm gonna find out with you. Uh, so I'm rolling down, hoping to still potentially find a River Wish Mermaid. Have not found one yet, getting a little bit frustrated. But we do pick up a Baba Yaga, and with that, I'm gonna take a monkey's paw. I think that these combats have been way too close. So I don't want them to be any closer than they need to be. Monkey's Paw also does a nice job in activating our evil Lancelot. So that's a ton of fun. And if our good Lancelot can slay and stay, we'll grab an additional tier five treasure this turn. So we've got a lot of treasures potentially coming out of this turn with the Monkey's Paw also providing some additional stats to the Nutcrackers. Now Lancelot is going to slay and stay, but the Baba Yaga is gone, so Lancelot's not going to get the treasure, but we get the tie. That's all that's important. I'm going to re-watch that combat because it is just such, such a crazy combat to watch. Let's break it all down. The Lightning Dragons take out both of my supporting characters. One of the Lightning Dragons sticks around. Lancelot slays. Lightning Dragon takes out the other support. Other Lancelot slays. Both of my Nutcrackers... Well, no, I'm sorry. Only one of my Nutcrackers activate. Oh, no, neither of my Nutcrackers activate. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe that wasn't even the thumbnail. Maybe this is the thumbnail. Uh, we are going super deep here. I'm going to pick up a Hand of Midas because we are on 6.0. I forgot. This game gets super crazy. I forgot that we did not activate our questing characters yet, but we're going to pick up Hand of Midas and we are going to find the Jormungand. And we needed this. We absolutely needed this because we are playing this game so risky, so greedy, and we need to start playing some stronger boards. I debate picking up an Echo Wood just because we are that weak. I typically don't like to play Echo Wood in sleigh boards but I think that we might need it for this one. Uh, a few small things that I want to note about my positioning on this turn. I should swi switch my lances to have my bigger one first, so that way that one can slay. My other one is already going to activate this turn regardless. I should also split up my Jormungan and my Baba Yaga to play around my opponent's Doom Breath. Now, luckily, my upgraded Jormungand is going to survive Lightning Dragon, and then Lance is going to slay, so my Yorm is going to get absolutely massive. This turn, this is the crazy one. I didn't miss it. Well, I just got confused. We activate Lancelot, and we activate both Nutcrackers, grabbing an Evil Eye, 
and a Horn of Olympus all in the same turn. That's kind of why I said it didn't matter which one's tier four, which one's tier five. We're grabbing them in the same turn anyways, so who cares? Then we'll also be able to pick up a Baba Yaga, and I really do consider picking up a Princess P here. I probably should have, but I still kind of want a River Wish Mermaid at this point too. So I'm rolling a little bit because we've got double Lightning Dragon and I'd love to find room for all of this on the board. Uh, I'm doing some quick maths here and realizing one evil or, or upgraded Baba Yaga gives plus 12 attack. The other Baba Yaga gives plus six attack. So these Baba Yagas can activate a Lancelot right away. It's also going to get some bonus stats from the Cloak. So we're going to activate another Lancelot. Why not? Our Lancelots will be big enough to slay. This was definitely a close one. If that Medusa had attacked into our Jormungand, we would have lost this combat. But we make it out alive with an absolutely massive Jormungand. And that's going to be enough to take out Zelhua and potentially make it in to the finals. All of a sudden, this game has definitely ramped up. Yeah, we're into the finals here. And I don't really think any of these tier 5 treasures are exactly what we need. I will pick up another Baba Yaga because that's always super sweet. And then I'm going to wind up rolling. We'll roll past this evil twin and I will wind up picking up another Lightning Dragon this turn. I will throw a mix of whistle onto a Nutcracker. Not gonna do too much with that, uh, but I will wind up finding a Lightning Dragon. I will have to sell off this Nine Sea Terror and this Medusa to pick it up, but I think that it's probably worth it when you're in the Slay Mirror matchup, which we do know that Loki is going to be having a bunch of dragons as well because we just played against them, uh, it's pretty good to have a Lightning Dragon on your side because then you can try to take out their River Wish Mermaid and that can really mess with their comp. And that was an absolutely beautiful hit for us because not only do we take out their River Wish Mermaid, which totally renders their Jormungand useless, now we have a River Wish Mermaid because we just stole it. So that was really sweet. We can even make another River Wish Mermaid with our evil twin, but that's not even the sweetest play that I make this game. My opponent's got dragons everywhere. They've got two lightning dragons and a doom breath. An absolutely crazy board. So what am I looking for? I am looking to add to my board after I pick up this golden chicken, a soul tack ancient. I can protect my entire back line by grabbing a soul tack and then evil twinning it. And I think that's how I'm gonna win the mirror here. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. Soul tack and then evil twin. And my Yormagan's bigger. I've got more Baba Yagas for my Lancelot than they'll have. I think that's gonna be enough. One more note I should say is that I should probably switch the uh, Jormungand and the evil soul tack so that Jormungand is in position three, but it really doesn't matter. I've got a Lancelot that's bigger than all of their characters. They've got a Doom Breath that can only take out one of mine, and then we've got a Jormungand that is just absolutely massive and should be enough to take it home for us. Really, really sweet game. Absolutely crazy stuff. I definitely went a little bit wild, a little bit deep, but with that, we also found some really cool plays, like making the evil soul tack, which is really cool. And my camera just cut out at the very end of this, but you know what? That's it for today. So I won't bother turning that back on, but thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.